what is the overall reaction that's happening here now? What is our overall reaction? What would be the starting materials for the overall reaction if we combine the half reactions? Yeah, in this case, it's actually pretty straightforward to figure out what the, what the starting, so what would be our starting materials for the overall reaction that these two cells represent? The copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons yields copper solid. Now, um, we still have the zinc. Right now, I was only doing the starting materials. Oh. So the starting materials here would be copper 2 plus, and what's the starting material from this reaction? Zinc solid. Solid zinc. And what should be our products? Our products would be um, copper solid mm -hmm. plus zinc ion. Now notice, it doesn't really make sense to put the electrons in anymore. Because if you put the electrons in, you would have two electrons on the right and two electrons on the left, and then they would cancel. OK, so we only list the, the electrons in the half reactions. We don't list the electrons in the overall reaction, because the electrons would cancel. That's really what makes these half reactions. A half reaction is something that shows where the electrons are coming from, but not where they're going to. Or a half reaction is something that shows where the electrons are being gained by, but not where they came from. All right, and then here, I could say that the E for this reaction was our positive 1.1 volts. So this cell um, E properly is written next to the overall reaction. And this reduction potential properly is written next to this half reaction. And this oxidation potential properly is written next to this reaction. And we can see why adding up these two half reactions gives us the overall reaction. So logically, adding up the two half potentials should give us the overall potential, which is what this equation says. By the way, um, what does it mean that this came out positive? Does that mean the reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Spontaneous. Right. If this had come out negative, that would tell us we must have screwed up. Because we knew this was a galvanic cell. So that's a way to check our work. If you know you're doing a galvanic cell, your cell potential has to come out positive, or you must have made a mistake somewhere along the way. If, we, if this had come out negative, we would have known that we guessed wrong about who's at the cathode and who's at the anode, that we accidentally set up an electrolytic cell instead of a galvanic cell. All right, now what can you do with this? Well, for example, now how could we figure out and see what the delta G is for this reaction? Plug it into a Yeah, we would plug it into this equation over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty common. So let's see, what would I plug in? For E here. The 1.1 volts. Yeah, not the half potentials, but the full potential. Um, what would we plug in for F? F's Faraday constant. Yeah. Which is minus 6,485. You got it memorized. Excellent. Yeah, 96,485. That's right. By the way, do you know what the units are for Faraday's constant? Is it coulombs per second? No. Coulombs per second? No, that's F. No, I'm. Oh, there are no units. It's a constant. Uh, it is a constant, but it has units. It's 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Okay. If you actually look in the textbook, I think it'll just say coulombs per mole. But it's important to realize it means per mole of electrons. Okay. So what does, what does Faraday's constant tell us about the universe? What is this? How do the, we interpret the, this? The rate of electrons is the same? I mean, like the energy or? Let me help you with that. The charge or okay. So this is a little bit difficult to interpret because there's a ratio of units. A good way to interpret ratios of units is to stick in the number one. If I put the number one down here, that doesn't change the fraction, right? But now it's easier to interpret this. What this tells us is if you put one mole of electrons in a bucket, how much charge would it have? 96,485 coulombs. That's what this tells us about the universe. It tells us how much charge there is in one mole of electrons. Um, what, what, does, what do coulombs measure? They measure charge. Coulombs are the unit for charge. You, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys have taken physics at all, but you know, uh, in physics, usually you, you kind of think like an electron has like a negative one charge and a proton has a positive one charge, but those are not in coulombs. In coulombs, an electron has 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Maybe you've used that number sometimes. Yes. Right. So a single electron would have 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Of course, that's a very small number, but that makes sense because an electron is a teensy tiny object. But that's not really very helpful when you're working with an actual practical battery. You're never really going to just transfer one single electron. 
What you're going to be transferring is whole huge batches of electrons, so it's better to count how many moles of electrons you've transferred. And then this would tell us how much charge you transferred with each mole. Okay. Um, so that's oftentimes helpful. That tells you when you need to use Faraday's constant. Here we know we have to use it because it's in the equation. So we're just plugging 96,485. How about N? What would N be here? It's the number of moles. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So, so what would N be? Just one. Now, N is the number of moles, but it's the number of moles of what? Uh, electrons. That's right. The number of moles of electrons that are being transferred in each cycle of the reaction. Well, every time we run this half reaction, how many moles of electrons are being transferred? One mole of copper is involved, but how many moles of electrons oh, according to two. two? That's what this number here is telling us. Okay. N doesn't stand for the number of moles of elements that are going through the reaction. N here is the number of moles of electrons. That's important to, um, to remember. N is the num so in general in chemistry, N stands for lowercase n stands for number of moles. Have you guys done uh, the ideal gas law? P V equals N R T? Yeah, maybe last term. So in PV equals NRT, N is the number of moles, but in that case, N was the number of moles of ideal gas. But here we're not working with gases, here we're working with electrons. So here N stands for the number of moles of electrons. How do you know how many moles of electrons are being transferred? Well, from your half reactions. So it's N right now, two? That's right. Okay. In this case, N would be two. Okay. Yeah, that's quite important. And in fact, many, many problems you're going to need this formula, and if you don't, you don't know what n is, you can't do that. So notice that you have to write the half reactions before you can use this formula. You need to know what the half reactions are. So the, all the processes we've been going through, we've been trying to model kind of the systematic method for doing these problems. First, figure out where the, who's at the cathode and who's at the anode. Write down the half reactions. Write down the potentials. Uh, write down which way the electrons are moving. Figure out the cell potential. A uh, big mistake people make is they kind of try to jump to the answer too quick. For example, suppose the question had asked us for the delta G here. Well, it knows how much work we would have to do before we can even start figuring out the delta G, this galvanic cell. All right, so um, here we can see that we're transferring two moles of electrons. So lowercase n in all these formulas stands for moles of electrons. You can see then that you can see it has to because otherwise it wouldn't be compatible with F. Remember that F is about moles of electrons. And now we're multiplying that by n, which is also moles of electrons. So those two terms can cancel out. Okay. Um, now, what would have happened if this half reaction had a different stoichiometric coefficient than this half reaction for the numbers of electrons? Well, that's when you have to multiply it so the electrons match. Then you'd have to balance them first so that they have the same number of electrons, so that you would know what number to put in here. So I gave you kind of a simple example because I chose two elements um, where the half reactions both started with the same number of electrons. But if these had started with different numbers of electrons, first we would have to balance them so they had the same number of electrons by multiplying them by something. Uh, and then, then only once we have a single number for the number of electrons in both half reactions do we know what number to plug in for n. Okay, all right, and then that would tell us how to find uh, delta G in this case. Well, you, might as well, you guys have your calculator? You might as well figure out what number that is. generally for delta G? Delta G actually definitely does have units. But what's the name of this concept? Gibbs free energy. What are the units for energy? Joules. That's Joules. right. Joules. Oh, that's right. that's Joules. actually quite important. Since this is measuring a, type, a, a kind of energy concept, it must be in joules. Now, is this joules or kilojoules? This is joules simply because what is the standard unit? S, what's the standard SI unit for energy? Joules or kilojoules? Joules. Yeah, joules are the standard unit. 
Well, since we plugged in all numbers in standard units, we must have gotten out a number in standard units. E, remember we plugged in in volts. Well, volts are standard units. We plugged in standard units everywhere, so this must have come out in standard units. Um, so this comes out in joules. 